Good morning, everybody. Good oh, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we want to we want to say we're 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 having a moment of great frivolity because of the day it is. Uh, we're showing all of our genealogy mascot genealogy mascots, our genia mascots. But we want to first off say that we hope everybody on WikiTree and everybody else everywhere are safe from those horrible storms that went through parts of the U.S. last night. Our hearts go out to everybody, and if if you're a wiki treer and you need some help, let us know. Mm -hmm. uh, give Greg a call personally. I've got his phone number here, and you can call him. Uh, just wanted to let you go, guys know that uh, Wiki Tree did some rebranding. Uh, it's now Wiki Free, mm -hmm. uh, and you can see that in the uh, thing. And also, blue is now the color. Yes, orange is over. Orange, orange is over. Is orange is done. So yeah. we're yeah. So here we are. And uh, I, the, the cutest, we've got our genia mascots with us. Uh, Greg, introduce us. Uh, so this is P Patty, Patty the platypus, who was my daughter's favorite toy and is now our granddaughter Sophia's favorite toy. Oh, mm -hmm. and Patsy. And this is Spooky, who has been with me for 47 years. Can you believe that? Wow. That is so cute. And if, everybody knows Murph Moose. You have to watch out because if you look at Murph, Murph Moose in the eyes, you know, he kind of, mm. he's, he, you know, just, he can, yeah, he yeah. is. Hypnotizing. Uh, Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> what What's up with that? <laughs> Pip. No, Pip. No. <laughs> okay. Good morning and welcome to WikiFreeze uh, livecast. Um, livecast. I'm Gams Duglin. I'm here with Gerg Eklar and Betsy OK. <laughs> Good to see everybody. Good to see everybody. All right. Yeah. Uh, I have a Georgia Red Wiki WikiFree shirt. I do. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Okay. So we can get started because like, I'm still asleep. <laughs> I really am. It's a nice dark, dark day up here. We could start out with the question of the week, which is what is on your genealogical bucket list? Lots and lots of answers. We want to upvote that. Yes, we do. Uh, best answer. This is really the best answer. No, I'm going to jump that. We'll wait, say best answer for last. Okay. All right. So here we go. Lots of interesting stuff. Uh, from this one, Lisa Gervais, who just, yes. what's that? I was just, I was going to say hi. Lisa was in the chat. Oh, she just oh, came no. in. So three things. Going to upvote that. Uh, to finally connect my branch of Macklems, uh, second great grandfather, to more prominent family from Niagara Falls, Ontario. Uh, two, to find families of Irish ancestors. Good luck with that. Oops. Uh, and to find more information on the ancestors of a Hessian soldier, Friedrich Knapp, who arrived in Newfoundland in 1777 and was discharged in 1783 and remained in Quebec. Good luck with that. Jane Pope says, find my partner's lines. So a lot of the questions were finding somebody, finding this ancestor or that ancestor. Uh, stuff about uh, civil war between the states. This is uh, Andrew Simplier from the Civil War Project. Um, he wants to find the 106th uh, Regiment from New York, the infantry regiment there. And uh, it's also known as the St. Lawrence County Regiment. Mm. I know. From each company, try and connect company of men. All right, and connect them. Alexis, to become more organized. Oh my word, mm. that would be mine, I think. <laughs> Um, I, I, every, every Saturday I wake up thinking, oh, I need to go and reorganize all of the stuff on my computer. Not, not, not really organized stuff, but put stuff where they should, where it should be. I guess that's organizing. Like mm -hmm. it's already organized, but you know, you know how that goes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, major bucket list item has always been to break down the brick wall. So brick walls were something that people talked about a lot during their, their answers. Break brick walls. He, Judy Stutz. Hey, Judy. Judy Stutz wants to find out uh, who her paternal grandfather, Ju Joseph Stutz, mm. uh, with the help of other cousins identified on 23andMe and after taking a DNA test and yet another cousin that had puzzle pieces of information 
and a desire to connect, that bucket list item has finally been checked off. Nice. Yeah. Well, now many of the cousins are gathering to find out when and why the Waxler Eskovitz family left Romania when they did. Mm. Huh. Interesting. You didn't put a date up there. We couldn't make guesses, Judy. Mm -hmm. um, Scottish and Irish ancestors. Good luck with that. Um, although the Irish archives have been virtually rebuilt, so you can find a lot more information in one place than you used to be able to. Finding parents of my second great-grandmother, Emma Louise Rose. She married George Washington Couch, so she was Emma, Emma Rose Couch. Hmm. But I'm bump. Wow. <laughs> Nobody else thought that was funny. Oh, uh, I know well, she's not the think, daughter. What? Do you think they sang a song when they were young? Yeah. George Washington Couch. George Washington Washington Couch. You know, the George Washington Bridge song. You don't know the George Washington Bridge song? No. <laughs> I don't think any American knows that. <laughs> really? Okay, Anybody sorry. Know that? Uh, Chris Barriello <laughs> is answering. He wants to fill in uh, stuff on his paternal side. Uh, yeah. Yeah, people in the chat are still talking about the storms from last night. Uh, I would very much love to find relatives on my mother's side, my maternal grandparents. Uh, Cronin, McKenna, Fitzsimmons, Fallon. Found records, uh, that's from Bob Rhodes on the immediate family. Let's go on to the next page. Uh, let's see. Still looking for my grandfather, Isaiah Davis. And then uh, to find the link between my answers from Ukraine and their Prussian forebearers, the hmm. surnames of von Freitag or von Stein, Lisa, Lisa, have I got some good news for you. Ooh. If you go over to the challenge that's going on right now, Neat. Society of Germans from Russia, Lisa, check that out. Mm. That's the Wiki Tree Challenge 6 uh, American History Society of Germans from Russia. Do you know about them? Check them out. They're mm -hmm. they're they're Ashgar. Ask ask Ashgar. How do you what what would you how would you pronounce that? A H S G R. Mm. Like Osgur? the British Isles from Family History of Ottawa's Befisco. Ashgar. Ashgar. Anyway. Yeah. Going back to the question of the week. Uh mm. Brian gives us a video to watch from last mm -hmm. year. Thank you, Brian. Uh, but he still wants to do some travel mm -hmm. to Scotland. He wants to. Isle of Skye, mm -hmm. a mystery of a group of settlers from a community called Lorgal, who mm -hmm. were part of the clearances, were put on a ship to Nova Scotia in 1830, but never heard from again. There's no record of the ship arriving uh, that he's been able to find, nor any of the record of the ship sinking. In fact, I found records of the same ship and ship's captain afterwards going to Australia, just no records of this particular group of F refugees. I wonder if they got blown off course and went to a different place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Uh, and I like this one. I'd like to find one single, solitary, verifiable Irish record. <laughs> oh, I can so understand that. Yes. yes. Okay, oh. and the question, the answer of the week. That is so good. Uh, this was voted up by Chris Little. It was Kay Smith's. Uh, I guess putting off meeting any of my ancestors as long as possible is foremost. Ah. I read that four or five times before it clicked into me yes. what he was saying. Then trying to figure out which ones um, to spend an eternity with. What if you don't like the ancestors yeah, that you need right. an eternity? That's An old guy cool. once worked with said that he didn't want to go to heaven because all of his ex mother in laws said that <laughs> that is where they planned to spend eternity. <laughs> they were some of the meanest people he'd ever met. <laughs> Mark Twain torn was torn between heaven for the weather and hell for the company. Uh. I guess thanks to genealogy, I'll know uh, several either way, however it goes. I love it. As far as a bucket that list, who is the next brick wall to fall? Uh, where is the next rabbit hole? I love that answer. And that is, that is definitely great. the yeah. best answer for the question of the week. So there we That's go. That's fantastic. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, neat. Good stuff. Well, following along uh, that nicely is the profiles of the week. Um, 
because <laughs> that last one, I can't remember the name now. I just, it just, I should have. Um, Kay Smith. Guy, Kay, no, no, the one before that, the one who's who said, well, just to find one verifiable oh, English yeah. record, Irish, Irish record. Irish record, yeah. That was Matthew Sullivan. Matthew, yes. Oh, Matthew, you're so right, because the Irish records are hard to find, um, depending on what you're looking for, yeah. Though I did find, because um, I'm working on this project for, for a friend of mine, um, his family is all Catholic, um, and the Catholic church records are, um, there's a lot of those available, so, um, but if you're family wasn't Catholic, then it's not as not quite as easy. In sure. in Canada, the Drew Ann collection has a lot of other stuff in it as well. Like because mm. the Catholic sometimes the Catholic clergyman in the area was the only clergyman. Right. So mm. they ended up doing other kinds of stuff too. So mm -hmm. that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Um but anyways, yes. So we just um the Wiki Tree Challenge prior to the uh, American Germans in Russia uh, anyways, that combination. <laughs> um, John Tyner is your biggest fan, by the oh, way. Oh, that's nice, John. <laughs> that's great. Oh, John, good stuff. Thanks. Um, the, was the Wiki Tree Challenge that just ended um, to benefit the Northern Ireland Family History Society? And mm. so we've got a number of uh, Irish notables to, to look through today. Um, so is, uh, let me put my cursor uh -oh. on the right. What? What's that? You uh, see a typo. Uh, where's where's this this type? We don't we don't see no typo. Uh, I don't know what what you're talking about. Um, I didn't create that page, so if it's a typo, that's not my fault. Yeah, it is. It's all your fault. Greg. It's all my fault. <laughs> so there was I did notice there was a typo in one of these profiles, and I should have gone in and edited it before we went live, but I didn't because I kind of felt that if I did that, but then my name would show up here in the. Um, and get credit for, you know, the most recent edit. And I thought, well, that's, I didn't do any other work except, mm -hmm. you know, change one little typo. So that doesn't yeah. deserve credit. Yeah. And that's my excuse for. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently John Swiss Swift is a cousin of mine, 15th cousin, 10 times removed. But have to go back to the 1200s to find the common connection. Um, so he is our profile, the, the uh, highlighted profile for this week. Um, Reverend Jonathan Swift, mm. uh, turns out, um, because he did go and become a member of the, uh, of the church, Church of Ireland, I believe it was. Uh, he had three different, um, positions that he held, um, cler clerical positions. He was a dean at St. Patrick's Cathedral, and he was actually buried in St. Patrick's Cathedral. Mm. Um, but he was also a prebend. Mm. He held the prebendary of Dunlavin and then the prebendary of Kilroot. So what's that? I, I, I have a I have a point here. John Tyner, I was going through the thing. He says he met one of the profiles of, of the week this week. Really? I'm hoping all of them are alive. Just uh no. Yeah. None of them are alive. Bad? I don't think. Okay, go okay. ahead. Sorry. We're gonna have to so John, don't tell us yet. <laughs> yeah, no, don't tell yeah, us yet. Don't tell us. Let, let us guess which one. Okay. <laughs> Because hmm, that's very curious. I'm pretty sure it's not Jonathan Swift. No, no. <laughs> Unless you have a time machine. Pretty sure it's not him. But anyway, I had to look up what a prebendary was. So a prebendary uh, is um, is the name for uh, a, a can. Well, depending on whether it's a noun, whether it's referring to the the place or the person who has that role, um, is a canon, which is a cleric in a in a church or a cathedral, actually. Um, that that receives a pension, so so you actually receive money for it's it's sort of like a little mine it's a minor title basically and there's a, a pension a, a, there's a, a income associated with it. So, um, but do you have to do something for that? Well, you would probably have to you have to do something for the church, like you'd be whatever our canon uh, C A N O N whatever that cleric I see does right. Okay. Um, so it's some type of some type of church administration or whatever mm -hmm. um anyways moving on so he was born on the 30th of november 1667 parish of saint werberg's in dublin second child and the only son of jonathan swift and abigail eric his father emigrated to ireland from england and so there's a number of these profiles where they um they're irish because they were born in ireland but the family actually came originally from england um 
possibly because they were in, uh, some of the English land landowners and uh, holders and stuff. Um, so his father had been appointed by, as a steward of the King's Inns, uh, which is the Hall of Irish Lawyers in 1666. His mother had been born in Dublin after her. Her father was a vicar at Leicester, England. So again, her mother, the mother was born in Dublin, but the father came from England. Uh, but he was prosecuted for holding an unlawful, nonconformist conventicle and forced to relocate care. And anyone know what a conventicle is? No. I had to look that one up too. Basically, I mean, it's this an, is his father who was convicted. Yes, this is yeah. his. Yeah. Uh, actually, this would be his maternal grandfather oh, who I was see. convicted. This is why his mother ended up being in Dublin. Yeah. But a conventicle is an of illegal. Or relating to a convent or relating to a conventicle. <laughs> yeah. So in this case, it means holding an illegal meeting. Some a people. conventicle originally signified no more than assembly and was frequently used by ancient writers for a church. At semantic level, conventicle is only a good Latinized synonym for the Greek word church. Mm. So he was holding illegal church sessions. Oh. That's exactly it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And apparently that they didn't like that. Um, but anyways, his uh, his mother, uh, his father had died before. Um, uh, his father died before he was born. His mother left him the care of a wet nurse and he was raised by uh, his father's older brother. Um, went to Kilkenny School, one of the best prep schools at age six, and then went through Trinity College, uh, Hart Hall, Oxford, which was later Hertford College. Um, he had Meniere's disease, Meniere's syndrome, so a disease of the inner ear. So he got vertigo, deafness, and fatigue sometimes. Um, he was a, he became a secretary to Sir William Temple, uh, who was an influential political diplomat. And that's where he, he met uh, someone. He became named Esther Johnson, but he used a nickname for her and they became quite close in later years. Um, he did join, uh, let's see here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Where did it say he joined, which church it was, but anyway, he, he joined the church and then he has a number of clerical appointments. So Stella was um, the, per he first met her at, he was her tutor when she was young. Mm -hmm. uh, and then eventually they became quite close. And there's a theory that St the Stella, um, Stella. Esther, yeah, Esther Johnson, they actually, that they were secretly married, but the research notes say that even though there are, there are some people who've gone on the record say they were, there's other evidence or other people that claim that they weren't and even a suspicion that they were in fact related that his father really wasn't swift but actually a temple <gasps> and this is your closest match betsy mm -hmm. uh swift yes yeah interesting. but anyways in his first uh the interesting thing in his first clerical uh, appointment he was um he, he was um uh, uh well, where are we here? Uh, do, 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 do. He uh, now I, I've I've lost where it was, but he, he was dismayed by some of the the people who were there, so that led him to his first satirical writing, which was the Tub, the Tale of Tub, mm. written written for the universal improvement of mankind. So that was his first satire, and all his satire was was uh, published under a pen name, including Gulliver's Travel by Lemuel Gulliver which is the one that, of course, everyone's most famous with. But I'm thinking this guy had lots of nerve <laughs> penning something called a modest proposal for preventing the children of poor people in Ireland being a burden on their parents or country. Like, wow. <laughs> That's just, wow. Satirical. Satirical? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look out for the pitchforks, people. <laughs> uh, anyways, that's Jonathan. <laughs> what um up at the top what does dst stand for dst oh i don't know i did i missed that dublin <laughs> probably not dublin saint <laughs> <laughs> all right something to research yes uh, uh, Dean of saint. daylight savings time no <laughs> no probably not that where's john john ask john john <laughs> What is DST? Uh, 
Hmm. Okay. Well, let me we'll move on to the next yeah. one and someone else will fill us in on the DST. Henry George Ferguson. So I was kind of hoping that this guy would be my closest because, um, uh, so he was born in the 1884, 4th of November in County Down, excuse me, died at the age of 75 uh, in 1960. Still won the World Gloucester, England. He's close, but not close enough. Not close enough, no. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was born in County Down, Ireland. Um, and he was Harry Ferguson, uh, became a mechanic and developed the three point linkage system for the modern day tractor. And in fact, all the tractors on our farm growing up were Massey Ferguson tractors, which is funny. Um, we had cousins and they were all a John Deere family. So all their tractors. Did you guys were John have Deere. a feud? Well, we always we always argued about which was the best tractors. Of course you, know. you did. Did you do tractor pulls and stuff? To, we didn't that, actually do. Did you guys them. invent the tractor pull for that? <laughs> <laughs> if our parents weren't alive, you know, and we we could do what we wanted, we might have thought of doing that, but we didn't know. But anyways, <laughs> so I was kind of hoping when I saw Ferguson there, I thought, and this is the Ferguson from Massey Ferguson. Wow, it's like wow. It's like meeting you're one of your heroes. <laughs> Joke, go down to your categories list and then look right up above. There's a box that will show all of your, on your profile, there's a box that will show all of your connections to all of these people. But I think is Joe talking about the, um, when it says the, the direct connection that would come through. Oh, that would be from the extension. The browser extension. Yes, And that's Joke, right. is that your real name or is that a joke? Joke, well, because it's April Fools. Yeah, probably. really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I am because I'm a cousin, I, and I have the, the WikiTree browser extension. In we have an answer. Yay! Thank you. Distinguished Service Award in Ireland. Thank you, Judy. Ah, thank you. Nice. Thank you very much. Oh yeah. wait, and then she says no. That's DFA. So mm. maybe we still don't have it. So go ahead. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So his tractor improvements were patented as far away as Australia. Um, they were certainly patented in Canada and the U S. Um, so very, very, uh, successful with that. Um, then we have his marriage and his fa uh, family. He had a daughter, uh, he, he and his brother, uh, designed the first uh, airplane to fly in Ireland, the monoplane, uh, in 1909. He also developed a Formula One race car, uh, which debuted in 61 Grand Prix. Uh, and then there's a few other things here. And that, isn't things. that the year everybody wants to watch the Grand Prix is the 61 Grand Prix? Is it? Isn't that the one that was so immortalized in some of the movies with Steve McQueen and stuff, I think? Oh, maybe. I'm, I'm not into racing, so I missed that. So that's mm. cool. And then, of course, Meg's favorite. Arthur Guinness. Yes. Is this your closest? No. Oh. My closest is uh, Harry Ferguson. Ah, there we go. So we each didn't get the, the one closest that we wanted. No. <laughs> um, Arthur Guinness, born in 1725, Oakley Park, Selbridge, Ireland, and passed away at the age of 77, 1803, in Beaumont, County Dublin. Uh, of course, he's famous for being the creator of the Guinness Stout and the founder of the Guinness Brewery, St. James Gate. Um, uh, so his place of birth has been subject to question uh, or family tradition. And uh, so sometimes it's the home of his Reed grandparents because the custom then was for the expectant mother to go back to her parents' home to give birth. I mm -hmm. guess presumably her mother would still be alive and would be a little more caring and understanding than the husband who wouldn't know what to do with. <laughs> a new bird. <laughs> that's my that's my guess on what that family tradition is about. But you know, he kind of kind of makes sort of sense. Um, Woohoo! Yeah, that's Ron Tyner. Impressive. Ten degrees. Wow. Oh, well, uh, but he still wouldn't have been away. Uh, he still it, couldn't have met him. It, well, and he couldn't have gotten a free beer. <laughs> couldn't have gotten a free beer from him. No. Yeah. But 10 I think degrees. I have a picture of me in front of the Guinness place on in Dublin. Wow. So you're actually, I'm wondering, John, are you actually related? Mm. Or is it 10 degrees through a, a marriage? 
So he oh. says, John Grattan Guinness married my first cousin five times removed. Okay. There we go. Very cool. Um, so he married he married a daughter and an heiress of William Whitmore. Um, and to, they had at least 21 children. 21 children. That poor woman. And I noticed oh you gosh. said at least, Greg. Yeah, yeah, at least. Of which 10, only 10 or 12 survived to adulthood. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, first of all, going through that many pregnancies, yeah. but then to lose half of them, like that's just heartbreaking. Absolutely. Wow. I wonder. That poor woman. Yeah, maybe some were multiple births, so maybe there weren't as many pregnancies per se, but still, I don't know. Multiple births? Oh, that poor woman. I know. <laughs> I, I don't know. If you had twins, like if, if there are a bunch were twins, twins is, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know what to say. But, uh, his father was a brewer because his father brewed beer on the estate. That was part of his responsibility to brew the beer for the workers at the estate uh, that he worked at for the Archbishop of Cashel. Um, and so he learned about brewing from his father by helping his father. And then he started a small brewery himself. And then he gave he gifted that business to his younger brother. He said, "Oh yeah, this one's okay. You take this one. I'm going to start. I'm going to go on and do a better one." Um, and he signed a lease at a brewery where it was failing uh, in St James Gate in Dublin. And that one, he was brewing a new dark ale called Porter. And then from eight years, he went from just being a new member of the Brewers Society, the the corporation, to becoming the master of the corporation. And uh, that's when he decided to make only Guinness Porter in his. Uh, his brewery and of course the rest is history and guinness is just famous worldwide lovely day for a guinness <laughs> i i enjoyed drinking guinness but i didn't drink the stout i drank they have a a lighter one i enjoyed mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. uh seamus justin haney uh okay he died in 2013 so this could be the this one could that John, be met. Who John but, met. John said last week, I thought. Yeah, he did he say. Week. What? He did okay, say that last must be week. an April Fool's joke then. Yeah. I, I don't think any of them were alive last week. But maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong. You know. We'll see. Uh, born uh, April 13th, 1939 in Tamnoran, Bally County, Londonderry, Northern Ireland, uh, and passed away in Black Rock, County Dublin in 2013 age of 74 uh so he's a fair a famous irish poet born at the family farmhouse called moss Bowen. it's cool how the houses have names um between castle dawson and toomey bridge uh and attended uh anna anna horish primary school and then moved to bellahy played for, but he didn't play for the bellahy football team he played for the castle dawson football team I can't believe that. I know. What's what's he doing? Really? <laughs> uh, but he was buried in Bellahy after all, you know, in the St. Mary's graveyard. Uh, he was a Nobel Prize po uh, poet laureate. Laureate poet. Uh, widely recognized as one of the major poets of the 20th century. The first of nine children. Um, his father was a farmer. Um, and Sears is... Published works, main collections. Um, I must confess, I haven't. I don't think I've read any of his poems or mm. have any of these books. But from 66, 1966 to 2010, so that's quite a quite a span. Pretty prolific. Very prolific. Mm. Yeah. And uh, if you're interested in doing more research, uh, Prony, which is the public records of Northern Ireland, uh, holds some of the letters and cards written by Seamus Haney, along with some newspaper cuttings. So. That's come some interesting, uh, you know, primary source material there. John Wilson Kyle, rugby player, uh, born on the 10th of February, 1926 in Belfast, Northern Ireland, uh, died uh, recent, uh, 27th November, 2014, uh, Brinesford, County Down, Northern Ireland, 2014. So within John Tyner's lifespan as well. Uh, so possibly could have met him um, youngest of four children. His father was a manager at the North British Rubber Company. Um, 
and he attended Belfast Royal Academy. He excelled at boxing, cricket, and rugby, but he also studied medicine and became a doctor. Uh, uh, he made it. So here's a whole bunch of rugby terms that will mean a lot to some people and will just be words, random words I'm reading for others. <laughs> he, he made his debut at out half for the Ireland rugby team, age 19, against England at Lansdowne Road in 1946. He won 46 caps for Ireland, nicknamed the Ghost. He won a Grand Slam with Ireland in 48, toured Australia, New Zealand with the British and the Irish Lions. That was the team he was on in 1950. He played 19 matches, including all six tests and scoring seven tries. My son, Ben, Ireland. played rugby, so I'm good. I, I understand all that. You understand everything there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he became captain of Ireland, of the Ireland rugby team, in 1953. I hated I going to his games. That is a rough game without any pads or helmets or mm -hmm. anything. It's, ooh. Yeah. So, <laughs> there you go. So, uh, but he all outside of rugby, you said it's a really rough game. Yes. Outside of rough, rugby, he read American poetry and plays. Yeah, and he liked listening go. to good music. <laughs> and, and he and held he, a Bible class every Sunday, maybe praying for all the people he hurt on the pitch. You said he was a doctor eventually, right? And he was a doctor, yes. Huh. Um, Very well run. He had two children, uh, was married, and then he became a doctor play. because he saw the damage that was done during <laughs> rugby games. That's right. And so after he retired from rugby, uh, which was in 63 and 66, he moved to uh, Zambia. So Guess he, who he, he met? You have met Seamus Haney. Ah! He, 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 he. But last week? <laughs> I, don't, I didn't see him say last week in the... In, oh, I thought you said he said... I, I thought I saw that, but I could be wrong. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that yeah. was a good guess because you did guess that that was who he I did guess that that was one he could have, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, but uh, yeah, so very impressed. So after his rugby, then he went and did good work, uh, being doc doctor in Zambia and also apparently in Indonesia as well. Huh. So very impressive. Uh, William Boyd, uh, was born 4th of July 1931. Glen Gormley County Antrim. And he was one of the profiles from the challenge. Ah. Was oh. here? Let's see what, what they did. Because I remember it didn't have very much on it. Okay. Well, let's look, uh -huh. at, his, look at his ancestry is now hey. pretty full. Ooh. Well done. That. Wow. And some of these go further back, right? Let's see yeah. if we go to David. Yeah. Yeah. It goes nice. back another generation. Yeah. That's very impressive. Good stuff. Good stuff, WikiTree Challengers. Nice. Yes. Yeah. So I have a friend who was uh, born on the 4th of July, but he was born, he was actually born in Ireland. <laughs> actually, that I'm, now I'm thinking of it uh, as well, but he's not, he doesn't have a profile here. He's still living. No, no. Uh, but he says, uh, you can Americans add him with his permission. I mean, you. Yeah, I, yeah, he'd be unlisted though if he's still yeah. alive. Um, but he says, um, the Americans celebrate that I wasn't born in America. <laughs> 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 so that's kind of funny. That's his joke. Um, anyways, he uh, so all the rest of the people we've done so far have had you know fairly fairly decent lifespans. This is the beginning of uh, a trend we're gonna see for the later ones. He died at only 45 which is way too young. But he was an Irish actor, came to the stage, um, acting stage as an adult, so he wasn't a child actor. Um, his most notable uh, role was Masala, who was the bad guy in the film Bin Her. Bin Her, Her. yeah. Yeah. Um, but he did lots of other things. He was in 60 films altogether. Wow. Um, he was also in a film called Jumbo. Now, that's not Dumbo. Like, that's not related to Dumbo the elephant, is it? Uh, no, but funny. I... I, let me look it up really quick. I remember watching that. Because he got a, a Golden Globe a nomination for that. Um, Jumbo the Elephant, the Circus Elephant. It is an elephant. Yeah. Wow. Huh. Interesting. Um, so sometimes he was a hero. Sometimes he was the malefactor or the villain. Uh, and there's a malefactor. list of 
I know that's a cool word. Wow. These <laughs> Irish profiles, they use big yeah. words. <laughs> I'm going to have to use that today. So yes. Uh huh. Youngest of nine siblings, uh, born to Irish Canadian parents. Very cool. Um, got to get the Canadian in there somewhere. Got the today. Canadian in there. Yeah, we've got another Canadian coming up too. Um, he took his mother's maiden name because he thought Stephen Boyd would stand out better than just Stephen Miller. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. Can you just go to the top again? So we had a lot of surname activity for him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So formerly Miller. So he was born Miller. His father's name was Miller. Okay. His mother's maiden name was Boyd, which uh -huh. sounds more Irish than Miller. Miller sounds English. And so yeah. he, did, he wanted to come across as Irish and, uh, and more memorable. So that's where he chose <laughs> Stephen Boyd. Though his like his name is William Stephen, and he went by his middle name as opposed to William. Mm. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, he had two marriages. One very short. He got married during the filming of Ben Hur, um, but they separated just after three weeks, and then were divorced uh, yeah. a year later. So, yeah, those romances yeah. on set. Oh, those rom those onset romances. Wow. <laughs> uh, but he died at forty five as a ma of a massive heart attack playing golf Ooh. with his wife. But still, man, how, how devastating would that be? Devastating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Yeah. Forty five, way too young. Yes. Robert William Moore is our next. Born in Belfast, died in twenty eleven. Again, could have met John Tyner. Could have met, but it was that was not his claim to fame. That was not that was not to be. <laughs> um, though John probably wouldn't have objected to going to Spain to meet someone, you know. Uh, he was a Northern Irish musician. Over the course of his career, he performed a range of music, including blues, blues rock, hard rock, heavy metal, jazz fusion, and was often described as a virtuoso and been cited as an influence by many other guitar players. Um. Uh, so he grew up, he was uh, with four siblings. His father got him interested in music at the age of six when he was invited him to sing Sugar Time on stage. Uh, he only, but he died quietly in his sleep due to a heart attack, another heart attack um, on the 6th of February, 2011. And he was 58. Mm -hmm. uh, vacationing in the Estepona, Spain at the time with his girlfriend. And then he was laid to rest in St. Margaret's Cemetery. Um, his, the donations were directed to Teenage Cancer Trust and a special needs charity project. So that's kind of impressive. His son, Jack, and his uncle, Cliff, sang Danny Boy at his funeral, which brought people to tears. Oh, Yeah. Uh, next we have Ruby Murray. Ruby Lamar. No, Ruby. Yeah, Ruby Murray, uh, daughter of Daniel Murray and Wilhelmina Connolly. Born on the 29th of March, 1935 in Belfast. Mm -hmm. uh, died at the age of 61 in 1996 in Torquay, Devon, England. Do you, spell it Tor do you pronounce it Torquay or Torquay? 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 Never quite I sure. I bet it's Torquay. What? Torquay. Torquay? Torquay. Okay. Someone That's in the chat, bet. let us I know. have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that word before and I'm just yeah. never quite sure. Maybe, maybe somebody in the chat will. Like if it was just Q U A Y, it's a key, right? Torquay, I think. Yes, yeah, Torquay. Key? Torquay. 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 Is it Torquay or Torquay? We're all Dorky. <laughs> We're all Darky. Torquay. I GSL says it's Torquay. Torquay. We have okay. it. Torquay. Okay, Torquay. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Um, Rob Murray was a Northern Irish singer and Ruby Murray was a Northern Irish singer and one of the most popular singers in the British Isles in the 1950s. Um, and she, she was referred to having one of four children. She had a surgery done on her throat when she was a baby, which left her with a very husky voice. So that would be very distinctive. She made her debut at age 12 when a well-known television producer, Richard Afton, spotted her. Um, she met Bernie Burgess, a member of a popular quartet in 1957, and after she, she left Northern Ireland to marry him and lived in Northampton, Ireland, uh, England. Ruby and Bernie were divorced in 77. Bernie is still living, as is their daughter. Um, 
their son, Tim Murray, died in 2020, that said. And then she later married Ray Lamar. Now, this is the interesting part I found. In the 1960s, a new phrase entered in the language of Cockney rhyming slang with when Ruby Murray was adopted as the alternative for curry. And so going for a ruby became such a common expression that many Indian restaurants even took the name the ruby. Nice. Isn't that cool? So then I had to remind myself how the Cockney rhyming slang worked and what that meant. So the way it worked was, for those who don't know, you take a phrase which has, you know, multiple words. So like Ruby Murray and you substitute, uh, you use um, the word, the last word Murray, you look for something that rhymes with that. So curry rhymes with Murray, mm -hmm. but instead of saying Murray, you, you actually use the first word ruby. So you're saying, I'm going for, a, you want you want to say I'm going for a curry, but just I'm going for a ruby. Knowing that ruby means Murray, Murray's rhymes with curry. It's like a code. It's, it's a yeah. code. It's, it's a code. weird code. And <laughs> I actually looked up on Wikipedia. It has a, not some examples. Um, I'm going up the apples when you actually mean going up the stairs because stairs rhymes with pears, apples and pears. Oh, yeah. I hear your grand dog. Yeah, our grand dog is, is uh, <laughs> yeah, there. <laughs> um, I'm going to cross the frog because I'm going to cross the road, frog and toad road. Uh, I'm just using the one. I'm not making this yeah. up. I'm, yeah, I'm no, no. following what Wikipedia is saying here. <laughs> Apples no. and pears, old Joanna, Ocean's Eleven, Barney. That's People are throwing out uh, other code for you there. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> old yeah i don't unless they're on here i'm not sure this <laughs> this hurts my brain <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of it's wild but anyways i thought that was interesting so there we digress francis is really? about <laughs> us digress i know <laughs> I know. You know what? For April Fools, we should have just done everything straight with no digressions. That would have been the foolish thing. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> uh, Fanny Parnell, uh, Fran born Francis Isabel. Oh, 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 you should know this one. Old Joanna is a piano. Ah, okay. Ooh. And here's oh, another one. Old... Thieves can't. Thieves okay. Can't. Thieves can't. Go, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Apologies. Oh, man. <laughs> I didn't interrupt you. you down there That's right okay. There. Yes, I did. <laughs> Born in County Wicklow, Ireland. Um, uh, died in 1882 at the age of 33. Another tragic early death. She was an Irish poet and an Irish nationalist. Uh, she was born at the Avondale, Avondale Estate in County Wicklow. Um, and she was described as a poet. The poetess of the family knew every book in the library at Avondale. Uh, she was a regular little Irish rebel, dark hair and hazel eyes and very witty. Um, her father, John Henry Parnell, and his family belonged to the Pro Protestant Anglo-Irish landed gentry, but her political and social views seem to have come from various other sources. Um, so her, her mother was the daughter of an American naval co commodore mm. and that fed some of her anti-British sentiments. Mm. And her grandfather had written novels and pamphlets attacking the English injustice. Um, so she, she was uh, in famous, famously in favor of the tenants' rights and home rule for Ireland. Um, she wanted to have the... She was a poet and writer at a young age, using a pseudonym. Um, so the Irish National Land League was formed in 19, 1879 to bring about the reduction of rents and to facilitate the obtaining of ownership of the soil by the occupiers. So the people who worked on the land should be able to own the land, uh, right? Um, they wanted to uh, abolish the landlordism that was in Ireland. It was called the land war. Uh, so one of the people in charge of that was her brother, uh, her brother, Charles Stuart Parnell, and he was jailed. Um, but she and her sister, Fanny and her sister, Anna, were instrumental, they raised funds for the Irish Land League in support of, in support of the brother. Uh, she went to America, Fanny did. Um, Anna stayed in Ireland, in England, worked through in, in England and Ireland. Fanny worked in the United States, organizing, speaking at rallies, writing pamphlets and stuff. 
Um, when the brother got out of jail, he was released, but on the condition that um, the lead would be disbanded and that he paid off the debt, which was a draft of 5,000 pounds, an overdraft. Um, but then suddenly she, she passed away. Suddenly she died of a heart attack, apparently at the age of 33. Ooh, and, uh, and then her attack. sister, what's that? Another heart attack. Another heart attack. Yeah. In her thirties. In her thirties. Yeah. Um, and then her sister, uh, couldn't deal with that. And she suffered herself, a, um, a, an attack, a physical and mental collapse, Ugh. um, after her, um, after that. So mm. a sad Sad ending for both, but um, there you have it. Poor Fanny Parnell. Mm. William James Peary, uh, born in Canada, in Quebec City, in fact, uh, in Canada East. So they wrote Canada. Well, you know what? The parents were English, so they would have called it Canada East. Uh, but if you were born in, in Quebec City in that time and you were French speaking, you would have just called it Bas Canada, which is basically Canada East, Lower Canada. Um, so interesting, he has he, he was given granted two titles, but he was the only one to hold the titles. So they, so they were created newly for him and they were extinct upon his passing. So short-lived titles, barony and a viscount. Um, but he's most famous as being uh, in charge of Harlan Wolf, the company that built the Titanic the son of James Peary and Eliza Montgomery. Um, uh, his father was the son of a Belfast ship owner. He went to Canada to enter the trade to ship for shipping timber, you know, because they need large timbers to build these ships. Um, he attended, so he, when his father passed away, he came back. So at age two, he returned to Ireland um, or returned. He went to Ireland and then lived there. So his time in Canada was short-lived, but still, we can still call, claim him as a Canadian born. Um, uh, he excelled at school, um, joined the company, uh, became part of the company with, uh, uh, they did created three ships, the Oceanic and the Olympic and the sister ship, the Titanic in 1911. When he was asked about the, whether there were sufficient life rafts on the Titanic prior to its fateful inaugural voyage, he replied that the ship was unsinkable and the life rafts were for rescuing others. His words would haunt him for the rest of his life. Uh, his co-worker and his nephew, Thomas Andrews, was one of the many who died on the Titanic. And in fact, he himself was supposed to be on that voyage, but he took ill prior to the departure, so he couldn't go. Um, there we go. He was, despite that, so in 1906, he was created the, the first Baron Peary, for valuable service to the government during the war and the first Viscount period in 21. Uh, so there we go. He died of pneumonia though, aboard a ship, following a business trip to South America. And then the final profile of the week is Edmund John Millington Singe, uh, who is again, a distant cousin of mine, uh, 24 degrees, born 16th of April, 1871. Um, in Dublin, Ireland, and a few, uh, playwright, educated at Trinity College, won prizes in Irish and he Hebrew, interestingly, um, uh, interest in nature, roamed the Dublin Mountains and the Wicklow Glens, studied the Academy of Music, met Yeats, who advised him to return to his islands and write about life there. So he spent some years there and wrote about the islands of Erin. Uh, his greatest comedy, uh, which he's most well known for, is The Playboy of the Western World, which I'm not familiar with, mm. but uh, apparently caused a riot on its first Abbey production. Yep. Uh, wow. It's ironic laughter and underlying note of tragedy seemed abhorrent to the Dublin audiences. So mm. uh, apparently he didn't read the didn't read the room very well. <laughs> Yeah, but it makes me think of Rite of Spring. Remember how oh, that caused a riot? And it's yeah. Pretty, yeah. Right, yeah. So he um, died at, uh, how old was he? He died at 37. Again, a young one. Um, bachelor. Didn't say what he died of. But and there we have it. Mm. Very sad. And there are your profiles of the week. Excellent. Thank you, Greg. <laughs>
<laughs> um, well, um, there were a few more uh, sport photos that came in this week. Ooh. So I thought we could look at those. Uh, so we have, I, I can't, honestly, I can't remember if we saw this one last week. Mm, yeah, I think so. Because someone was saying, your, Meg was saying, that's not rock climbing, that's wood climbing. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. <laughs> well, here it is again. Rock but it says they're practicing. So they're really yes. practicing for rock climbing. <laughs> <laughs> um. And then we had this kayaking one uh, from Robin Shawls. That's uh, beautiful. In in Tas look Tasmania, Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, That's pretty gorgeous. Yeah. And uh, then here is wiffle ball. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I I love the really sharp looking. Um, uh, a caption here. Nice. Yeah. Let's see who did this. Um, oh, Dieter. No, no. I I can't remember who. Maybe it was. I guess it was um, Wesley. Hmm. Yeah. And um, this was also in the G2G post, and uh, they said that um, it was a tradition at family gatherings to always play games. So this was nice. a family gathering. Yeah. So next month, mm -hmm. uh, April's theme is couples. And I mm -hmm. checked this morning, uh, the, the G2G post just went up this morning and there was uh, there were no photos yet mm -hmm. um, in either the free space page or the G2G post. So find your photos of couples and put them up there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, will look, we will look at them. Um, also, yesterday was the final day of the first ever We Will Walk You. Ooh. Uh, yes. Nice. <laughs> and we did, we, were, we rocked those five people. We you did, rocked, eh? Good. We, did. Um, we will have a wrap-up video on next Thursday. Uh, there, we, we don't have um, a link for it yet, but uh, watch the, the uh, Aowens what's, what's Happening on Wikitree in April. A G2G post and mm -hmm. uh, the link will be up there and it'll be at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, 6.30 p.m. Thursday. Thursday. There's actually a lot going on um, because um, then later that night I'm doing an, um, a new member Zoom and, and that's back to back with something else. And so, yeah. Wow. Um, People, will, but luckily you can catch things on the on the uh, on the video. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and to wrap up on my week of iPad use. Um, oh yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, I, I, my final verdict is I was pleasantly surprised. Nice. Yes, and um, I, I really agree with Greg that I would not do anything that involved a lot of writing heavy writing, but certainly um, for for just, you know, creating profiles and adding sources and that sort of thing, um, it worked just great. Great. Uh, we had a really good, um, a really good response in the uh, G2G when I asked about it a couple of weeks ago. Are we mm. seeing that now? Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is from Alexandra uh, Schultz. I'm not sure if she's in the in the uh, chat, but I thought really good comments here. Um, she she uses a Bluetooth keyboard, and I would now that I'm back <laughs> this week. I we I would, wouldn't let her. We wouldn't I, let you her. know, no, you were being strict with me. Yes, that's right. Said, um, uh, and a Bluetooth pen. I didn't even. I, I guess that would that would help. You know, I actually when I was playing around with WikiTree Plus and I mm -hmm. I looked for suggestions on one of the profiles I cr had created, I had put the date place death place as United States I. <laughs> <Which> <laughs> I I think I might not have done that if, you know, I was typing or if I had something more precise. Right. So, um And if you so, had a, if you had a keyboard, then right. the the restriction of not doing something with lots of writing mm -hmm. would be gone away. So you could, True. in fact, with True. the keyboard, you could, yeah. the iPad could totally take over. Yeah. 
Um, and um, Alexandra even shadows via airplay to a TV for reading sources. Wow. I thought that, thought that was a great idea. Very cool. um, like me, um, she doesn't use the app. She uses the web-based versions of, you know, Ancestry and Family Search. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, she did mention about um, not adding in browser extensions. And I do want to speak to that because um, I had not previously had any brow uh, any extensions on my Safari on the iPad, but I went to add Sorcerer and uh, it was very easy. Um, so I, I mean, I didn't know what I was doing, but I figured, well, you know, what's, what's the worst that can happen? And, let me just try it. and um, it is, it is $5 um, for, you have to purchase Sorcerer to put it on your iPad um, browser, but uh, just Safari in particular. That's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but once I once I authorized that that charge, it, it just popped up. It was, yeah. it was painless. We yeah. appreciate you going down that that rabbit hole for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, the split screen mode that Greg, the Alexandra mentions it, and mm -hmm. I I uh, and Greg had mentioned it. I think my iPad is too old. Um, oh. That's yeah, I, I Googled like how do I do a split screen mm -hmm. and, and and I didn't I didn't have the things to allow mm -hmm. me to do that. And my iPad's about six, seven years old. Yeah. 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 And I think mine is about the is at the because you know you, the they come different sizes, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So on mine, if I do split screen, then yeah. I, I can see enough on each generally. Right. But if I had a smaller one, if I like my wife has an iPad mini. It's a little too small. Like you can do split screen on it if it's, yeah. if it's recent enough, but I don't know if it's workable. Right. Uh, so, right. yeah. But it is handy to have the two sides open and able to. Oh, I can see it would be. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yay. That's so yeah. fun. And we had uh, the work, reason Betsy. the reason that got started was that there was somebody in the Appalachian project. Ooh, mm -hmm. Shout out. Uh, who actually sent me a message after the live cast and said that they were on an Apple iPad and they couldn't keep up or they couldn't do stuff on their iPad quick enough. And mm. I said to Betsy, Betsy, there's somebody in the Appalachian project who is not having a, a good time using an iPad with WikiTree. And Betsy said, oh, well, I got this. And she <laughs> jumped in with, with both her feet, all, all five of her feet. <laughs> yeah thank you so much yeah, no it was it was fun i learned a lot we have something coming up this week on WikiTree. what's happening around betsy already mentioned the thursday night stuff we've got uh you're here with us this morning so the saturday mm -hmm. roundup live cast is uh is almost in the tank mm -hmm. uh alish is doing what do you what do you want to know about WikiTree plus yeah on the we're fifth. doing that together yeah are you going to be in there with them for us? Yeah, I'm. I'm the host, so <laughs> yeah, I feed him the lines, and then he, or I feed him the questions, and he he gives all the answers. That's a good one. Nine uh, o'clock. New member Q and A with Betsy Co. There you go. April the sixth. Mm -hmm. We'll be here on April the eighth next week for the Saturday Roundup live cast, uh, and probably back in. Uh, well, no, Wiki Tree has changed its color scheme. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're blue. <laughs> we we're are blue. so blue, and it's Wiki free. Not wiki tree, wiki free. Uh, bingo's coming up on the 14th for the cemeteries project and the Titanic project. Kind of interesting that we were talking about the owner of the Titanic company. Uh, and we got other things coming up. Uh, bio builders, people who died before their 18th birthdays. Oh. Uh, Connect Canada notables, black history heritage uh, notables, G to G integrators. Long Challenge, Jetty, Puritan Great Migration, The Sorcerers, uh, U.S. Black Heritage Connecting, uh, the Connectathon, the registration is open. There you nice. go. Let's go to that one. Look at that coming up. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be there. I haven't signed up yet, though, so I should. Oh, you should. I should answer this post. Yeah. Oh, and I just realized that my other, the other new members, Zoom, were doing it on the 16th in the midst of connectathon that'll be interesting oh. we wanted we wanted to stay away from easter it would have normally been on easter but mm. i'm assuming the cornbread catchers are 
a team this time. But uh, mm -hmm. if not, I'll switch over. The Appalachian Project isn't a team yet. But uh, really, yeah, no, they're just uh, they're still under Virginia, so they're part of the Virginia stuff. Oh uh, yeah, I'm Team Canada this year. This or this round. <laughs> this round, I have yeah. uh, Twisted Thistle. So I just signed up. That's as easy it is as it is. Look at, look at that. There we go. All right, so back to where I was. There we go. So we've got that coming up and then the ongoing, the U.S. governor. So check it out. I don't have the social media feed up yet today, uh, but you can find that easily by going find. Let's go down here to the projects. Hello. There we go. Projects. Mm -hmm. Scroll down to the ambassadors project. There we go. Click on that. Hey, as, and then mm -hmm. run over here, down here, there's some tabs find the social media tab. And if you have a social media account and you'd like to share some information about Wikitree, you can do that. Question of the week, one name study, one place study, Wikitree plus, show project showcase, new member Q&A. Don't know what that is, Betsy Co. Or no, <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm Gams Duclin and Greg Eclair. So that's, that's sure. the week. So you guys have a good uh, week, and we'll yeah. see you next Saturday. And I'll All see right. Pip in the other meeting that he's telling me to go to. <laughs>